What would have happened if the Citadel Council actually gave Shepard their full support? <laughs> How's it going guys? Mr. Holton here, and I gotta say, this question has been in the back of my mind for a pretty long time now. And it seems like a lot of you guys have been wondering this too. But wait a moment, didn't the Council back Shepard eventually? Um, did they? The Collectors are abducting human colonists in the Terminus systems. Worse, we think they're working for the Reapers. The Terminus systems are beyond our jurisdiction. Your colonists knew this when they left Council Space. You're missing the important part, Counselor. The Reapers are involved. Ah yes, Reapers. The immortal race of sentient starships allegedly waiting in dark space. Uh, we have dismissed that claim. Well, yes, they did. In Mass Effect 3, that is. When it was a little too late. So what would have happened if they actually listened to Shepard way back in Mass Effect 1? Well, before I start going down that road, let's bring some context for anyone who needs a refresher. So back in Mass Effect 1, Shepard has his or her first mission as a squad leader on Eden Prime, where a colony has gone silent. On Eden Prime, Shepard finds out that Saren is the culprit behind the colony's sudden radio silence, as he's used the help of the Geth to wipe the colony out. His real target, though, was that of a Prothean beacon, and before Shepard catches up to him, Saren uses the beacon and then takes off with Sovereign. So Saren escapes, but not before one lone dock worker sees him kill another Spectre called Nihilus. The dock worker tells Shepard about what happened, and so the first pieces of the puzzle has been laid out. Shepard also uses the Prothean beacon by mistake, giving the commander a warning of what's about to happen. Unfortunately, Shepard doesn't really understand it yet. But so we go to the Citadel so we can meet the Council and talk about the events on Eden Prime. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. This is the first time we meet the galactic leadership in Mass Effect, and I have to admit, I got pretty frustrated with how nonchalant all three of them were on my first playthrough. Not only did c -Sec investigate Saren, but an eyewitness is not enough to get the Council to support Shepard. It is not until after Shepard finds actual evidence of Saren's betrayal from Tally that the Council decides to help Shepard and make the Commander the first human Spectre. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. You wanted proof? There it is. This evidence is irrefutable, Ambassador. Saren will be stripped of his Spectre status, and all efforts will be made to bring him in to answer for his crimes. So far, so good, right? Well, not exactly. First of all, the Council didn't yet believe that the Reapers were an actual threat, and basically explained it away as a myth to scare children. And after Shepard has chased Saren all over the galaxy, the Council then decides to ground the Normandy in order to bring Saren in by setting up blockades next to every mass relay that's linked to the Citadel. The situation just keeps getting worse as Ambassador Udina decides to get all political and reinforces the Council's decision instead of backing Shepard. All of this results in Saren reaching Ilos, and through Ilos he reaches the Citadel and attacks from the inside, while Sovereign and the Geth fleet charge in from the outside. Okay, pause. It's becoming pretty evident that all of this could have been preventable. Why didn't the Council just listen to Shepard? Well, after Eden Prime, I do find it pretty hard to find a reason to why the Council should have wholeheartedly believed Shepard. There was no actual real physical evidence of Saren being involved with the attack on Eden Prime, except for the single eyewitness of one dock worker. So the Council actually made some sense here. But let's say that after Tally provided the evidence of Saren's betrayal, what then? Well, now it gets interesting. Because the Council should have by all intents and purposes have revisited Shepard's vision from the Prothean Beacon. Now since it had become pretty clear that Shepard was telling the truth about Saren all along. 
Heck, Matriarch Benezia herself mentions the return of the Reapers on Tally's recording. And even she was considered a high profile among the Asari people. So the mention of them along with the beacon should have put the council on high alert. Even if the beacon was destroyed on Eden Prime, the pieces of it could still serve as some proof of Shepard's interaction with it. But there is also something else that we have to mention here. And that is the huge plot reveal we get in Mass Effect 3. Namely, the Prothean Beacon on the Asari homeworld of Thessia. When the Reapers have finally invaded in Mass Effect 3, Shepard gets called upon by the Asari counselor who wants Shepard to go to Thessia because of a very sensitive matter. And this is to find something she calls an artifact. Not exactly, but there is an artifact on our homeworld, Thessia, known only to highest levels of my government. What is it? With any luck, it's a means to help you locate the catalyst. The artifact is kept in a temple located at these coordinates. I've ordered a scientific team to meet you there. Now she doesn't say exactly what it is, but it's pretty apparent that the counselor knew exactly what it was from the beginning, since she was at the top of the Asari government herself. The Prothean beacon that's hiding under the statue of Athame on Thessia is actually the home to a Prothean VI, just like Vigil. And it is this VI that finally reveals the truth of the Reapers. No horrible nightmare vision needed. Our studies of past ages led us to believe that time is cyclical. Many patterns repeat. Like the Reaper attacks. And beyond, the same peaks of evolution, the same valleys of dissolution. The same conflicts are expressed in every cycle, but in a different manner. The repetition is too prevalent to be merely chance. So jumping back to when Shepard and Tally had revealed Saren to be the traitor, why didn't the Asari counselor react to the whole ordeal with the beacon? Uh, because writing? No, but seriously though, what would have happened if the Asari counselor had actually intervened here? Well, there wouldn't have been a trilogy. Or maybe that's not entirely true. But let's say she had. This would mean that they would have needed Shepard to interact with the beacon on Thessia because of the marker the commander got from Eden Prime. The Prothean VI pops up and tells the leaders of the galaxy everything that's about to happen. In best case scenario, the Council calls upon their respective governments and through a joint effort of all the species working together, the biggest army in the galaxy gets built in preparation to fight the coming Reaper invasion. Yes, probably much bigger than this. But not before dealing with Saren, Sovereign and the Geth. Now I don't know exactly how the fight would go, but the Citadel probably wouldn't be as unprepared for an attack anymore having stationed military personnel all over the Citadel to defend it from the inside. Sovereign would go down, and hopefully Saren could be captured and interrogated. Not that there would be any need though, as the Thessia VI would already have provided enough information. We know that the Thanix cannon that you can research on the Normandy is made from the parts of Sovereign, so the Alliance as well as every other government would put research into high gear to build Reaper weapons, even more so than before. Okay, so all is good and well so far. The galaxy is ready to face the Reapers, but with a secret weapon. As we all know, the Crucible is what brings the Reaper threat down in the end. And the confirmation that the Reapers were real and coming would definitely make Earth's government turn their gaze to Mars earlier to find more Prothean technology. Which would lead to the Crucible blueprints being found way earlier. Case in point, the Crucible would be finished before the Reapers had arrived. And from the Thessia VI, the galactic leadership would know that the Citadel is the home of whatever is controlling the Reapers. So, the Crucible could possibly have been docked with the Citadel in time, which would have meant that the Reapers would have been royally screwed. So, being the optimist that I am, I think that if just the Asari Counselor would have backed Shepard in Mass Effect 1, the galaxy would have been better prepared for the oncoming onslaught of the AI murder squids. Or maybe all of it wouldn't have mattered anyway, because of the Reaper's sheer power and strength in numbers. Also, yes, I know, there's still the Alpha Relay. However, Admiral Hackett sends in a squad to destroy the Relay even if Shepard doesn't go there. So, it's not a problem either way. Of course, this is my own headcanon of how it possibly could have gone down. So, I want to know what you think would have happened. Tell me in the comments below. And as always, have a great day guys. Mr. Holton, signing out.